Hello fellow preppers, tis I the rumpled one. I got to uh, watch some of the doomsday prepper videos on uh, Hulu and YouTube. I think it was YouTube mainly. I got to see the episode where that guy uh, had the Alamo, he and his uh, buddy there in Texas. I think they had 700 acres. Guy spent a few million dollars. And then the, his buddy shot the gun, and the other guy, I don't know why, didn't have adequate hearing protection, spends all that money and doesn't have, doesn't have earplugs and earmuffs on while they're shooting. That just didn't make any sense to me. But, I mean, with all that, I think the guy barely scored 70 points. It was kind of crazy. What do you have to do to get a, a good passing grade? I mean, 700 acres, his own water supply, I forget how many years of food, and they were quibbling about something. I don't know what those practical preppers are thinking. Then I saw the episode where the guy bought a helicopter. <laughs> his wife wasn't too happy about that, and he bought, what was it, $30,000, $40,000 worth of freeze-dried food. I don't know what the uh, Doomsday Prepper show is trying to prove, but I don't think the uh, average prepper has that. But once again, it's about Doomsday Preppers. It's not about practical uh, application. It's not about educating people. It's about making money through a lot of people watching their TV program. And there's nothing wrong with that. I have to you know, tip my hat and say, hey, good job. You got the viewers, you got people watching. And then they did a show where they, I guess it was the Escape from New York show. They had a woman, she was going to escape by walking, but then they showed how she was going to get mugged because she didn't have a good situational awareness. And they had another guy who, uh, stole a bike. I'm pretty sure they planted that bike there so he could steal it. And then he, uh, if I remember correctly, he put the bear spray on the guys. And then there was this one other guy, he was a Wall Street type, didn't give out his last name for protection or something, but I mean he puts his face on there so the whole world knows and somebody's gonna say, oh that was so and so. So his, his ID was blown. But this guy was a little overweight, and I don't know if he'd really make it in this situation because he's going to have to hop some fences and walk a long distance. I don't know if he'd make it. He made it on the show, but it was interesting how they didn't give them a score at the end on if whether or not they were going to survive. And this one guy was kayaking across the, uh, the river there, the channel, or the bay, or whatever it's called from New York to New Jersey. Because I think he was afraid of uh, radioactive fallout. Or was that, no, that might have been the guy who was the uh, broker. I kind of get him mixed up a little bit. But I'm not really sure uh, why Doomsday Preppers got uh, a little upset. I guess it was with East Coast Prepper or East Tennessee Prepper. They uh, took his video down or told him to take it down. Some kind of violation. I'm, I haven't heard what all that was about. So who knows? They might tell me to take this one down because I'm talking about the TV show. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. Maybe they don't like uh, anybody talking about it if they're not just saying how great the show is. I mean, it's a fun show to watch. You know, every now and then you might see something that you hadn't thought of or didn't know about. The idea of having bear spray instead of pepper spray sounds kind of cool to me. I checked it out online. I think it's $65 a can or so. I might have to put that on my... Uh, preppers to get list.
just in case, because you never know. Not to mention, <laughs> there have been bear sightings up here. Not in a while, but there have been. So that'd be my excuse to own it. It's kind of neat, though, seeing that one guy with the bolt cutters, also known as a master key. I used to carry one in, my, in the trunk of my car in the Trans Am when I lived in the back east because I never wanted to get locked in at night. You might put your car in a gated lot and then the event you go to runs late and by the time you get there, the attendant unlocked the gate. It's just like, no, 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 I'm hopping the fence, getting my car, and I'm cutting that lock and I'm going home. So, so that's one tool that people should, preppers should consider having in their arsenal in their everyday carry or their car carry kit. I'm not saying that you should have that so you can go around stealing bikes or anything. No, not at all. But you just never know what you might have to do if the time comes. <laughs> I also thought it was kind of cute how they, the girl had one of them like uh, Tootsie Roll Pops that had the stick on it. Just put it in your hand and, and use that as a weapon. And she had a knife. Why not just have the knife and use that? I can understand about improvising, but part of being a prepper is being able to improvise, but it's also being prepared. I guess in New York, you might not be able to have a handgun legally, But at least she was in shape. So working out a dancer or something. So she could probably take care of herself. I'm trying to remember if there was any other shows that uh, I saw that I haven't talked about. I think I saw about three or four episodes over the past week or so. And I also see that, uh, I guess, Revolution is taking a break for the holidays. Hopefully the writers will get it, get it right. But actually, it's not so much the writers as the uh, costume people. Having them change clothes every week or every other week, just that just doesn't cut it in a survival situation when you're on foot. Tell you though, with the way things are with this so called gun ban talk happening, we might see revolution a lot sooner than we thought. I even saw where one state might be considering uh, telling the federal governments that any law that uh, is against the Second um, Amendment is going to be nullified in the state, which I think would be great. I think if a state did that, they might get an influx of people. A lot of people might want to live there. And I bet the good guys would be coming in and the bad guys would be leaving. It would be interesting to see. And it would be interesting to see the federal government's response. What would they do? Send in troops? Against their own citizens? Who knows, that could be the trigger of the revolution. So anyway, National Geographic, you know, congratulations on the Doomsday Prepper Show. You're doing what you want to do. I applaud you. But the rest of us preppers know that uh, there's a whole other side to prepping. And... It'd be nice for you guys to show it, but with the title Doomsday Preppers, we know you, you're not going to. And that's okay. Because no matter what, we preppers know that if we fail to prepare today, we're preparing to fail tomorrow. And if we fail to prepare today, 
we might not be able to prepare tomorrow. And finally, if we fail to prepare today, there might not be a tomorrow.